Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Adam here with Indy Farm Life. Today is one of those days you guys have been asking me about for a while now. It's time for pond aeration. Let me show you the rig. So inside that little pump house, which looks more like a dog house, is a rocking piston air compressor, a couple cooling fans, and a power strip. I built this myself because the enclosures that you buy for these things were nothing short of $400 a pop when the pump itself, the hose, and the diffuser together only cost about 700 I wasn't gonna pay $400 just for an enclosure so let me show you what's inside and I don't know who built this but it's pretty slick asphalt roof just lifts right off nice and heavy so the wind won't take it and inside we have the rocking piston air compressor a pair of cooling fans that exhaust air out a little power strip down there for everything and just some extra space for airflow. On the end, I have six inch vents for the fans and two intake ports. I think they're four inch on the sides. And then I made sure to caulk it and seal it up real nice so nothing could get in here. And I do have one entry exit point, electrical and the hose, which I'll be using duct seal on. Usually used for electrical. You guys have ever seen this stuff. Never hardens exactly what you need for something like this. As I said, 100 foot, a 5 8 inch weighted air hose hooked up to a membrane style diffuser. And from what I read, this is the type of diffuser you want. So if you guys know me by now, you know that I'm not going to pay extreme amounts of money for something I can build better myself. Most of those enclosures have one fan, a little metal housing, and 400 bucks, come on. So. I built my own and now real quick let's talk about the different types of pumps that are out there and why I chose a rocking piston. So in addition to rocking piston there are diaphragm pumps but those are only good for about 8 to 10 feet at best in depth. There are rotary vane pumps which are much more efficient which have very long useful lives and little maintenance but again can top out about 15 to maybe 18 foot. Not ideal for a pond that you know is north of 20. Now the compressor I have is a half horsepower and works really well right at depths of about 25 foot but can go up to 40 foot deep. Plenty of power to get past the PSI buildup as you hit those depths. And while not ideal, the short term plan is to run it off an extension cord and put it close to the water's edge. Stick it out here in the deep spot. I know that's not ideal and probably not great for the pump, but it's a 12 gauge extension cord and I'm pulling only about three and a half amps. Long term, this is gonna live up, to the up by the house and run airline all the way out but I gotta get the backhoe out and dig airline a few hundred feet. So for now, I just wanna get air in here because I have fish now. I'll actually show you this in action before I stick it in the water. But when I do put it in the water, I'm gonna put it on top of that laundry basket upside down to keep it off the mud bottom a little bit. But real quick, I'll demo the unit for you and then we will see if we can't get this in the water. If you guys have questions about the build on the little pump house, let me know. I'll link all the little vents and the fans and everything I use down below. And I'll also link uh, this pump. The number one killer of these pumps is actually heat. So that's why I went with the four open ports and the two cooling fans. I know the asphalt roof won't help in the interim being out here in the sun, but once I get it up by the house in the shade, it should be fine. A little bit about this diffuser. This is a membrane style diffuser. They do have another type out there, which are the Airstone. You kind of see those, you often see those in fish tanks. I read that these are much better. They don't plug up with clay or mud as bad. The airstone ones can pack in a little bit, and they also get brittle and crack over time. Everything I read said that this is the way to go. You can also make your own by drilling holes in a PVC pipe. The problem with that is that's going to be coarse bubble diffusion versus fine bubble diffusion. I don't claim to be an expert. I don't do anything without researching it quite a bit. While coarse bubble diffusion will turn the water quite a bit, it won't add as much oxygen as, as fine bubble diffusion will. I'll turn this thing on and put the lid on it or the roof on it to show you how quiet it is and give you a sense of it's not that obtrusive. Then I'll pour some water on this diffuser and get an idea of how well and how fine the bubbles are. You'll also see them, the membranes inflate as I turn it on. So there it is running, not too bad at all. You can definitely feel the air coming out of there. Speaking of air, 
can already see some water bubbling on there. I had it tested earlier. Basically like boiling. But you can see, just like a fish tank, how much oxygen that can add to your body of water. Great for algae control and for the fish. Alright, I think I'm ready to roll. I got the hose hooked up to the pump. Kind of took all the kinks out of it. I used some zip ties from good old Harbor Freight to zip tie the diffuser to the top of that laundry basket and then built a cradle with rope and then I'll use this to lower it down. So this rope's gonna go out there with me and then permanently be attached up here on shore. Just gonna have to get on the boat and let the hose out of the boat as I go backwards. Hopefully I can actually pull it and it won't kink up on me. Definitely a two person job, but we'll see how it goes. I am gonna go ahead and start the pump up and let it be bubbling as I drop it, just so I know that when I rest it on bottom, it's got good diffusion and I'm not having to come back up here and do it again. I'm gonna leave the camera on shore as I do this. not too bad took a little time that trilling motor even though it's old and pretty weak was what I needed to get that out there uh, obviously the weighted line is sinking I highly advise if you're doing this actually get weighted line and don't try to do your own non weighted line and then at some point that rope will be saturated enough and sink I can already tell you it's gonna provide tremendous benefit to the pond you can smell the methane gases coming up from the bottom Let's go out here and check on it. So lots of benefit to aeration, algae, the oxygen for the fish, and most importantly, preventing turnover in the fall. If you don't know what that is, water naturally stratifies. So in a pond like this, the bottom of the pond never really gets colder or warmer than 39 degrees. It's kind of the steady state. So in the late summer, early fall, if the water cools off, that top layer with all the oxygen, when it gets below 39 degrees, will sink to the bottom. And that 39 degree water with no oxygen comes to the top, and that's how you get fish kills. That's what they call turning. Boy, you can really smell it. Which is good, and that, you know, it's doing its job, but bad meaning that, yeah, I definitely had my, some stratification going on here. Several days from now, you won't be able to smell it anymore. That's how you know you've fully turned the water. Again, this is a one acre pond, and this is rated for about a one acre pond, so I'm sized just right. Now, since there's already fish in this pond though, you do gotta be careful with how you start this up. So I just set an alarm on my phone. I'll do 30 minutes today, an hour tomorrow, two hours the next day, four hours, eight hours, and so on until you get to a 24 hour window. And then at that point, you just leave it on 24 seven. By my math, it's only gonna cost about 15 to $20 a month to run this. Well worth it to have beautiful clear water like this. But I'd bet you good money that water is really cold coming up out of there. Near the dock, a thermometer had said it was about 76 degrees. There's no way that water's 76 degrees. Whew, that thing stinks. Half my prop is broke, that's why it sounds terrible. I just ordered a new one on Amazon. I don't know if I mentioned, I think that's in about 17 or 18 foot of water. We still need about a foot and a half to two feet, so call it 20 foot. I think I got plenty of depth for it to do what I need it to do. Less the one foot that it is up off the bottom with the laundry basket. Actually, two other quick things. 
I have a wireless thermometer and put the base station in the house and the sensor out here. I'm gonna put it in here. I don't know if it'll reach to the house, but maybe at the barn. I'd like to know the high and low temperature. Well, not the low, but the high. And see how hot it actually is getting in here and if these vents are doing their job. You kind of cinch them up. Also, another reason you need a rocking piston, I kind of mentioned at the beginning, but this actually shows you. We're at 10 PSI right there. That's a pretty good back pressure and the diaphragm probably wouldn't get that done. When I go to bury the line from here up to the house, one thing to keep in mind that you gotta do is you can't use this 5 8 inch line the whole way. It builds up way too much pressure. So what you gotta do is use like an inch or inch and a quarter. And I've got some uh, water line up in the barn that I'll use and minimize the amount of back pressure you get so you don't overwork this thing. Oh, and I almost forgot. Another thing to help the pond be really healthy beneficial bacteria they come in different kinds liquid pellets these are blocks so you just toss them in they're time release I think you get about 60 days out of each one each block treats five acre feet of water so I really technically need probably about four I ordered three they only had two that's how it goes thanks tractor supply but yeah I'm gonna go out there and toss these in probably one relatively close to the aerator and then one over on the far side of the pond as well well there you have it guys a little pump house pond aeration project it's gonna make a world of difference you can already see some algae some filamentous algae we had going on here and with fish in here now I can't really use copper sulfate or shouldn't anyway I think I scared most of them off over here or that airplane did well it feels good to check the box on that one I didn't think this project would be that difficult the real question is how long does this pump last am I gonna get the longevity out of it that I hope and want We'll see. Check back and I'll definitely keep you guys updated. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button. And if you would, please consider subscribing. I'd love to have you along for the ride. I got a whole lot more projects with the pond this summer. Hit that subscribe button. We'll see you guys in the next video. Take care.